We have two solar storms, and one of them seems to be Earth-directed, and it's hitting now. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely keeping us on our toes. As we switch to our front side sun, we actually had two different solar storm launches, one in the south around the 8th and the 9th, and at almost the same time, one in the northwest. And as both of these launched, the one in the west moved off to the west, but the one in the south moved toward Earth. But boy, have we been challenged trying to model these things because they kind of camouflage one another. Meanwhile, we've been looking at the solar storm conditions, and it looks like the one from the south is actually hitting us now and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Now also as we switch to our far-sighted sun you can take a look at that stereo's view. Stereo's pretty much looking at the sun from the side and you can see the sun looks pretty bland right now. There's not a lot going on and that means solar flux has dropped back down into the high 60s which means poor radio propagation on Earth's day side but then again that's good news for both GPS users with GPS reception and for all kinds of space traffic. It looks like easily over the next week everything is going to be in the clear. Now switching to our coronagraph view, this is also the view from Stereo A, and Earth is off to the west. The problem is, as Stereo continues to orbit towards Earth, things that are even going west of Earth are also off to the west. So when you get multiple solar storms that are kind of going the same direction, they camouflage one another. And you can see that on the 8th and the 9th, you can see all of this junk moving off to the west. Basically everything going north of the Earth-Sun line, that is going off to the west of Earth, but everything south of it is pretty much going earth directed so it's been a real challenge to get the models to be able to deconvolve all this stuff so that we can get an accurate prediction time Switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now this is NASA's version of the model, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole, with Earth being off to the right here is this yellow circle. Now you can see that big solar storm being launched to the west of Earth. That's the bigger of the two storms. But you can also see kind of a shadowy blue thing moving off toward Earth, and that's the Earth-directed component. And this thing, it looks like it's going to hit Earth right at the beginning of the 14th. As a matter of fact, we're already seeing early signs of that solar storm hitting now and it could be bringing us some aurora to high latitudes over the next couple days and possibly down to mid latitudes over the next day or so before things begin to settle down. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon and by the 18th our moon will be less than 10% illuminated so now it's a great time to catch some dim objects in the sky like maybe comet Neowise or some aurora. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that earthward-directed solar storm. Now, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with up to about a 40% chance of a major storm. And these conditions will continue over the next couple days before they begin to calm down as we move into the weekend. Now, at mid-latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 10% chance of a minor storm. But this should only last for about a day. So your aurora photography Photographers, if you're at mid-latitudes, take advantage of this very rapidly because the conditions will be very fleeting and we should get back to normal quite quickly. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we are back to a spotless sun, which means everything is in the green for big solar flares. We have no risk for radio blackouts, and that should make you GPS users very happy on Earth's day side. Now, unfortunately, that also means that the solar flux is back into the high 60s, which means poor radio propagation on Earth's day side. However, you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, we do have that weak solar storm coming, so that could give you some auroral propagation or maybe something cool on the six meter band. So maybe things aren't quite so dismal, at least on Earth's night side. Now also because we're still trying to come out of solar minimum, we uh, are dealing with a higher cosmic ray influx than we normally would have. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes. You are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. 
So the space weather this week is definitely keeping us on our toes. We've had two solar storms that have been launched, one of which is Earth directed, and it does look like we're beginning to see the impact of it now. So your war photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you should be able to enjoy a decent aurora show over the next couple days. Now, if you're at mid latitudes, it could be a lot more fleeting, but hey, it might be worth a look if you're dedicated. Now, you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, things aren't looking quite so good for you. We're back to a spotless sun, and looking at stereo, it sure doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. So we could deal, be dealing with poor radio propagation on Earth's day side for maybe the next week or more. So you're just going to have to hang in there. Hopefully that solar storm could give you a little bit of a boost on Earth's night side, though. So be sure to have some fun with that. Now, also, you GPS users, well, things on Earth's day side look pretty good for you. We don't have any risk for radio blackouts. But but we do have that earthward directed solar storm that could be hitting, so as long as you stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from Aurora, your GPS reception should be pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.